Virus. A regular virus is a type of malicious code that alters the way that a computer or program works. They are designed to spread and are activated by human actions. A virus usually attaches itself to a legitimate program or document called the host or carrier. It infects the system, copies itself, and spreads to other systems. Common types of viruses are file infectors that attach themselves to .exe files and run when the program runs, a macro virus which is written in the macro language of Microsoft Word and Excel. These infect documents and templates. These were more common in the 90s and early 2000s. A polymorphic is a tricky virus that can change its code when it infects a new system, making it difficult to fight. A boot sector virus infects the master boot record of the hard drive or boot sector of a floppy disk. It loads into memory before the operating system starts. A metamorphic virus is even more advanced than a polymorphic virus, as it can completely completely rewrite itself with each iteration. Worm. Unlike viruses, worms self-replicate and don't need human action to activate. It doesn't even need to attach to an existing program. It also doesn't need a host. Due to this and the ability to traverse networks, worms are known for being able to spread extremely fast. Some worms have made it across the globe in hours. The worm's replication activity alone can clog up bandwidth and cripple corporate network infrastructure. They are are extremely difficult to contain because they have multiple ways of spreading, whether through emails, networks, or even USB drives. Trojan, a type of malware that disguises itself as legitimate, harmless, or even desirable piece of software. It's known for tricking people into downloading and running it. It's named after a Greek story about a wooden horse gifted to the city of Troy with hidden enemy soldiers. Trojans are known for using deception and social engineering to propagate themselves. Although, unlike the previous previous two, Trojans don't replicate themselves or attempt to infect other files on their own. The most common use of a Trojan is to create a backdoor on the victim's computer to give a malicious actor control over it. Trojans can also be delivery mechanisms for other types of destructive viruses. Ransomware, a type of malware that encrypts the victim's files or locks the user out of their system entirely. The attacker will then demand a ransom payment, usually in crypto, to unlock the system. The system gets infected through phishing emails, malicious online ads, or Trojans. Other kinds of ransomware threaten to dox the victim or corrupt valuable files. A common protection against ransomware is to have backups of your data, internal, external, and off-site. Spyware. Malware that is secretly installed on a device to gather information about a person or organization without their knowledge or consent. It is not meant to cause damage, but to steal your data for the hacker's benefit. Like Trojans, they don't self-replicate. The types of information it can gather are passwords, login information, credit card numbers, browsing history, and it can even record calls. Spyware has been a key tool in identity theft, financial fraud, and corporate espionage. Some possible symptoms of spyware are sluggish performance, unusual browser pop-ups, increased internet traffic, or your antivirus software is disabled. Adware, software designed to automatically display or download ads to a user's device, often without their consent. The purpose is to generate revenue by serving ads to the victim. Although not all adware is inherently bad, some ads are a natural part of using free software, even though it can be kind of annoying. However, most adware in common discourse are talking about the malicious kind, as it is deceptive, overly intrusive, and difficult to remove. But adware is a bigger problem than simple annoyance. It can be a security risk, invades privacy, and ruins user experience. Botnet, a really dangerous type of attack as it's not just one system infected with malicious software, but an entire network of computers under the control of one user, usually without the owner's knowledge. Each computer essentially acts like a zombie controlled by something called the command and control server. Key characteristics of a botnet are centralized control, meaning a single bot herder or bot master can control thousands of devices to act in unison. Stealth, as bot software is designed to remain hidden on the infected device. Automation, meaning it can be programmed to launch an attack automatically. And scale, which is the main power of a botnet. The power comes from its sheer size. What one computer can't do, an army of thousands can do easily. Botnets are often used for DDoS attacks, crypto mining, 
identity theft, data harvesting, spam and phishing attacks, and click farms. Logic Bomb, software that is designed to do a malicious action, but only when a specific condition is met. Unlike other malware that acts immediately upon infection, Logic Bombs lie in dormant waiting for a trigger. It can lie in wait for a day, months, or even years. Logic Bombs are usually insider threats, as it's almost always placed by someone like a disgruntled employee or a malicious insider. They are made for precision attacks and, due to its delay in timing, it can be difficult to catch the perpetrator. Rootkit, a stealthy piece of malware that's designed not only to hide itself, but hide anything the attacker wants. A rootkit is a collection of malicious software tools that gives unauthorized remote admin or root access. It grants control over a computer or an entire network. Its primary purpose is to be hidden from the user, operating system, and traditional security software. It often exploits vulnerabilities to gain the highest level of system privileges, allowing it to control everything. A rootkit is mainly used to create a hidden backdoor to deploy other payloads like keyloggers, bots, and spyware. They are extremely persistent as higher level rootkits can be almost impossible to remove with software alone. Keylogger, short for keystroke logger, it's surveillance software designed to record your every keystroke on a computer or or mobile device. The recorded information is then sent to the attacker and obtains passwords, credit card numbers, private conversations, and other precious data. Keyloggers tend to bypass encryption and security protocols by capturing input before it's encrypted, and they tend to steal everything on your system. They are difficult to detect through casual computer use, even bypassing virtual keyboards. Browser Hijacker This modifies a browser's settings without the user's permission. Its goal is not to only damage the computer but also generate revenue for the creator by forcing traffic to specific sites, collecting browser data, and serving excessive ads. It targets browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and Safari. It's a type of adware designed to solely make money for the attacker. It often embeds itself deep into the browser's system files, making it difficult to remove. Browser hijackers are so problematic because they invade your privacy, degrade browser performance by being an extreme nuisance and security risk. Wiper malware. This is made to completely erase or destroy data on a computer or an entire network. It's so destructive, it can make an entire system inoperable. Ransomware encrypts or locks up data, but wipers completely destroy and are meant to cause irreversible damage. Wipers are usually made for ideological, political, or military reasons, as it's often a weapon in cyber warfare. Wipers have caused complete loss of data for organizations, massive financial losses, and damage to power grids and hospitals, risking human life. Cryptojacker Cryptojacking is the unauthorized use of someone else's computing resources, whether it is CPU, GPU, or power, to mine for cryptocurrencies. It mainly steals computing power for generating revenue in crypto. It's low risk for the attacker, as the mining is not illegal, but the unauthorized access is. This makes it low risk high reward for cyber criminals compared to other attacks. Signs of a cryptojacker are usually slow performance, overheating, and fan noise. Also an increase in electricity bills. Cryptojacking malware can cause damage in financial cost and damage to hardware. Fileless malware, a type of malware that doesn't rely on an executable file in order to run. Instead, it executes in RAM and uses legitimate trusted system tools like PowerShell or MS Build to carry out its activities. It's highly stealthy due to how it works. It requires live memory forensic tools even to find it, and evidence of the virus disappears upon shutdown. It can evade normal antivirus, and it blends in with normal activity. Backdoor, a covert way of bypassing normal authentication, encryption, or security in a computer system to grant remote access to an attacker. Once installed, it's meant to remain in place for long-term access. The best ones are often difficult to detect. Backdoors can be used to compromise an entire network, undermining trust in entire companies, industries, or digital infrastructure. 
Knowing about potential threats and malware is important for becoming a well-rounded and good programmer. And to become a good programmer, you can use Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform with interactive courses in programming, math, science, and even machine learning. What I personally like about Brilliant is that the lessons are fully interactive. It tests you and you're able to apply your knowledge while you're learning. A method proven to be six times faster than watching lecture videos. It teaches advanced topics such as multivariate calculus in a way that's so quick and easy to understand. You not only learn programming, but you also learn logic, AI, data analysis, and mathematical thinking. It generally helps you become a better thinker and problem solver. And the lessons are crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professors from Stanford, Caltech, MIT, Microsoft, and Google. You can try Brilliant for free, but if you sign up through my link, brilliant.org slash flashbite, you can get 20% off an annual subscription. It's personally helped me learn a lot, and I'm sure it'll help you too. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video.